What is up everyone? In this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about mutexes and atomic values in Golang. These are very important, especially if you do distributed stuff or if you're going to use GoRoutines that will modify and read from uh, a state. Right, before we continue, you know the drill. If you like the videos I'm providing to you, consider subscribing because 50% of my viewers are still not subscribed to the channel and you can do me an enormous favor. Subscribe to the channel, jump into the Discord, give me a thumbs up, the whole shebang. Let's go. All right, so uh, as usual, we're gonna make a, a very nice uh, use case so I can uh, show you a very good example. And we're gonna test that and I'm gonna teach you some cool tricks. So let's say we're gonna make a game. Let's give it some dopamine and uh, let's make a game. So we're gonna say type game. Uh, it could be a game state or something. Uh, client side, server side, doesn't really matter. Uh, actually, we don't need that game. Let's make a player. We're gonna make a player. It's gonna be a struct, right? Because a game without a player, that's uh, not a good game. So we have uh, a player and we're gonna give this guy some health, right? And that's gonna be an int. And uh, let's say we're gonna make a new player real quick. Uh, and that's gonna be a pointer to this player thingy. Uh, and let's return the player, right? Just like this. And um, I'm gonna give this health. And let's say 100 or something. Yep, that's fine. Okay, so in a game, we always have uh, some kind of a game state, uh, uh, some game loop, actually, that will do some calculations with the player. He's attacking, he is whatever he's doing. And you will have some kind of a UI that will reading, that will keep reading from the player to show his health in the UI, right? That's a very common use case. So let's make something like um, start UI loop. And we're gonna give this player um, inside of this thing. We're gonna give it the player, and we're gonna say here, taker is gonna be a um, time new taker. We're gonna say time second. Like this, we're gonna make a for loop so we can print out this player. Um, we're gonna say fmt println. Uh, player, uh, actually, we're gonna do a print f real quick. Player health uh, is gonna be this percentage d slash r. So we're gonna we're gonna print at the same line, and we're gonna say player health like this, and then we're gonna wait for the ticker uh, to complete, and then we're gonna keep looping. That's our UI loop. Very simple. It's gonna take in a player, gonna read from the player, right? The next thing we're gonna do is gonna start a game loop. We're gonna say start a uh, game loop. We're gonna paste in a player. We're gonna give it a player as an argument. I and mean, actually, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna um, copy the whole shebang. We're gonna make a loop here. But we're gonna say that the ticket is gonna be uh, a millisecond, a millisecond times, let's say, uh, 300 or something. And in this loop, what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the player's his health. He's gonna take some damage from, I don't know, he's getting shot at or something, I have no clue. Or he's, uh, he felt in the lava or something. And we're gonna say that the uh, player is health minus equals uh, is gonna be a rent int and we're gonna ra a random number between zero and 40 or something. And then we're gonna say that if the player health is gonna be smaller or equal than zero, we're gonna break and we're gonna fmt printf ln and we're gonna say game over. A simple game like this. Right, so in our main function, what we could do, very simple. Uh, and I'm doing these examples because it's important. I could already have something typed out for you, but that's, that's, that's not a good case. You're not gonna learn as much as now. Uh, so we're gonna make this player. We're gonna say player is gonna be a new player, right? And then we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna start up um, the UI loop in another go routine. Start uh, UI loop with the player inside of it. And then we're gonna block on the game loop, which will return actually, uh, if the player is held is um, actually break. We could, um, it's fine, it's fine, it's all fine. All right, so if we run this, go run main.go, then you see the player's health is uh, boom, and the game is over, right? It's game over, and it's a little bit uh, problem here because we have this print, this print R here, uh, but it's fine, you know you know the deal. And it's work, it's, it seems to work perfectly fine, right? You make your program and you think everything is good. <laughs> and you make a test, right? So let's make a test here. I already have a test open. So you're gonna say func test game. 
and we're gonna basically copy the whole shebang from our main, paste it in here, right? And then we could say something like go test verbose uh, everything. Boom. We're gonna test the game here real quick. Boom, and everything is, is done. The test is passed and we are happy. We go to home, we sip margaritas on the beach, but actually there is a big bug. You have a data race condition. And how can you actually test that? Well, you can do that by saying go test. Uh, you could the whole shebang. And then you could do dash dash race. And press enter. So it's testing everything. And then you see test failed. Why? Because we have a data race. If you specify dash dash race at the end of your test, Golang, the Go compiler will spin up uh, a race detector that can actually track most of the time very well if you have data race conditions in your program. And a data race condition is basically that uh, you have uh, multiple Go routines that are basically trying to read and write at the same time. Somebody is reading and somebody is writing. So that basically means that there could be a possibility, it's not always the case, it's not always the case, but most of the time it will look perfectly fine. But there is a possibility that you will have inconsistent behavior because the player health is 33. You're going to read it, but actually it's, you see what, they are not synchronized. And it could be that you will have a wrong value. So the player could already be dead or not dead whilst he needs to be dead, if you know what I mean. So very hard to track. So... Very important to always test these things with a race con with a race detector. Okay, so now you're gonna fix that, right? Uh, how do we fix that? Well, there are two possibilities because I'm gonna teach you everything about mutexes and atomic values. Let's let's start with a mutex. So uh, what you could do is basically here we could say uh, mu from mutex is gonna be a sync wr mutex, and that's basically. Uh, WR, RW mutex, it's a read write mutex. So we can uh, basically lock for reading and lock for writing at a different time, uh, which is more optimized than just lock everything uh, for writing and reading. So we have a mutex here. So what we're gonna do, here we are reading from the state, right? We are not updating the state in this UI loop. The UI is a reading from the state. So we're gonna say player mu r lock. And here we're gonna say player mutex um, R unlock, right? That's fine. So you lock it before and you'll unlock it after. You could also use a defer, but uh, we're not going to do that because we are in a loop. Um, yes, then our game loop. What are we doing here? Well, here we are actually adjusting the state and here we are reading from the state. So what we could do, we're going to basically lock the whole shebang. So we're going to say player mu, we're going to lock because we're gonna read and write, so we're gonna lock. We're not only gonna gonna read, we're gonna write also. So we're gonna lock this thing. And after we are done here, we are gonna say um, player mutex unlock, just like that. And now we are actually protected. So let's uh, test this real quick. So we're gonna test it with the race condition flag, and you see. The test is passing. So what is a mutex? A mutex is basically a synchronization way, a synchronization utility. Uh, let's say you have a couple of go routines and they are all waiting. They are all want to access and, 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 and they want to access, read or write something, the same variable from a state, right? So how are you going to determine who's going to be first and who is need to wait? Well, that's what the mutex is going to do. You can, you can think of it like somebody has a flag, there is a pie, a beautiful, delicious pie in the middle. And there are 10 people in the line and they all want to eat from the pie. That's a problem, right? So you need to synchronize and you can give them a red flag. And only the guy with the red flag can eat from the pie. And when he is done, he can give his flag to the other guy. So the other guy can, can eat from the pie. That's the same thing with the mutex, right? So everybody that holds the mutex can write, depends on what mutex you, 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 uh, you locked, can write and read from the state. And only the, root, the, only the routine with the flag can do that, but the mutex can do that. And when it's done reading or writing, it will give the flag to another Go routine. And that's the next in the line that can read and write from that state. 
That's what a mutex is doing. It's a synchronization way. So you are 100% guaranteed that, the, that the, the reading and writing is happening synchronized with a synergy. So there is no inconsistent behavior, right? Cool. And uh, you could also refactor this a little bit, right? Instead of uh, doing it dirty like we did, we could say func, for example, p player um, get health or something, which is going to return an integer. And we're going to say here, uh, player mu get is basically read. So we're going to say r lock. And then we're going to say defer. Here we can do defer p mu uh, r unlock, right? And then we're going to say return. Uh, p health just like that and then we're gonna make another function it's gonna be players uh, take damage or something take damage uh, value int uh, we're gonna say p and uh, lock because we're gonna adjust the state we're gonna defer also here and it's gonna be an uh, unlock and then we're gonna say player health minus equals is the value, just like that. And then uh, instead of doing these crazy locks here, we could just make it simple, nice and clean. I'm gonna say get health. And then here uh, is a little bit different. Let's delete the mutexes. First of all, we're gonna say player take damage, right? And it's gonna be this rand thingy. And then here we're gonna say fp get health. Uh, and that should actually be the same thing. Let's test it real quick. So a little bit of, um, yes, a little bit of, of a cleanup, right? So this is basically mutexes, right? Very important to understand. Always use them. Always think about a use case that, that, could, ha that, that could be possible. Each time you think there are multiple go routines access, accessing, reading, writing from a state as the same state variable, think about a mutex, test it, with go with the test uh, dash dash race, race flag. Okay, the next thing are atomic values. And um, let's refactor this. Let's delete the mutexes, delete, 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 delete here. So no, there are no mutexes anymore. So if we test again, we're gonna see, boom, race condition detected, right? Pro problem. How are we gonna fix that? Well, let's use atomic values. So instead of making this health an int, we're gonna make it an int 32. So, uh, if you want to get the health, we're going to basically say, uh, that could be an int, that's no, no problem. You're going to say here, uh, atomic uh, is going to be a load int32. And of course, we need to cast this to an int because uh, this is an int32, but we are going to return ints for user friendliness. So we need to cast this int32 to an int. So we're going to load the address, right? The address of player health. That's what we're going to load. So an atomic value is basically um, an optimized, it's it's basically, it's you, atomic basically means that you can do an operation one at a time. Uh, and that's what this this is gonna do. It's, it's gonna make sure that everybody that's gonna read, that's gonna load the int, and it's gonna store the int, that it's gonna be in a synchronized way. And it's, for some of the use cases, much better to use an atomic int, especially for these simple things like a health and all that stuff, uh, because it's going to give you less overhead and, and complexity that comes with a mutex. And if you wanna be more precise, beca because I'm gonna be very careful with what I say um, about these things, because the people on Reddit try to pitchfork me and every mistake I make. So uh, if you wanna learn more about atomic int, you can go to chat, uh, GPT, GPT3 chat, and it will tell you everything what you need to know. All right, so get health. Uh, take damage is uh, a little bit different. So what we're gonna do is first of all, we're gonna get the health. It's gonna be, I think we could do get health like this, right? So we're gonna load this int, and then we're gonna say um, p atomic store int32, and we're gonna store the, can we do, we're gonna store at the address of the player health, right? And then we're gonna store the result and that's gonna be health minus value. And that's gonna be a problem because it needs to be an int32. So we're gonna say int32 this thing. And we don't need to do anything more because we have these nice abstractions about get health and take damage. And I think if everything is fine and we're gonna test this with the race condition, it should be fixed. Boom. Yes. So you see, that is basically um, 
how to use mutexes and atomic values to protect your application from uh, race conditions, inconsistent behavior, very hard to track. It's gonna work from 80 times of 100, it could be that your application is perfect, but it's the 10 times uh, that's gonna be an inconsistent state. And if you're doing very important shenanigans with user balances or, or uh, points or something, it, yeah, you don't wanna have that. So always be careful with that. It's um, the most annoying thing to debug. It's gonna take a lot of time. So be aware of that, right? So that's it. If you have more questions, hey, feel free to jump into my Discord community. Uh, over, I think we are at 600 people already. So uh, if you have questions, jump into the Discord community. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. And I'm looking forward to see you in one of my live streams or future videos. Peace out.